Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we look at the week that was, we can see that the market for the most part in it flat and split for the week. The Dow and the S&P rose fractionally. The Nasdaq fell just a bit. Uh, so again, the market was flat and split for the week. And for the most part, we had a so-so, if not disappointing, start to our earnings season. Nothing really coming out overseas. We did have China's GDP, but nothing really uh, uh, sparked the market. We did see also the euro hit fresh lows, but it did rally against the dollar here on Friday. Um, as far as our corporate news, as I said, we did kick off earnings seasons. Alcoa kicked off uh, uh, the season on Tuesday, I believe. Um, with the inline report, and then here on Friday we had the uh, much discussed J.P. Morgan earnings because of this London Well trade, where to date they've lost 5.8 billion. Remember when it first came out and discussed it a month or so ago, it was only two billion dollars, so it's continuing to grow. Um, but they were otherwise profitable, so um, the market took some solace in that. Um, as far as economic news, the only thing was that. The FOMC minutes made no mention of quantity easing, but they did say that the Fed needs to look for new stimulative uh, measures, uh, that the, mark, uh, the economy does look like it needs to be uh, some stimulus, but it needs new, uh, new tools, I believe is a specific word. So a blase, blase week, nothing much going on. We are dead in the middle of summer. Um, but we do have some earnings coming up this week. We've got Goldman Sachs, Intel, IBM. Y'all, he's there, but really uh, Goldman Sachs and IBM are probably the bellwethers that can really do something to the market. Um, not as much as Goldman Sachs anymore, but Intel also can move the market. I'm really looking at that IBM. I believe it's Thursday. As far as uh, economic events, nothing really, no A-level uh, announcements coming out this week, really. Um, and notice that there's nothing on Friday. As usual, we are starting off with our market segment leaders, the dollar, gold, and crude oil, and we'll zoom on in here uh, a little bit more. And we can see that go, uh, the dollar here once again has busted out, even made a new not high here all the way up here to 84. Uh, we did get our double bottom off the 50 moving average. Um, but uh, you can also see we came right back down into this range. So I, I'm still watching this 83.5, 80, uh, just above that range as some type of resistance, uh, especially going forward. You can see, though, on our market profile, look at this volume accumulating at 83.44. A lot of volume in here, but there is a little window here uh, down to uh, the top of our uh, market profile, which is around 83. So um, a lot of volumes accumulating here, uh, and as we talked about, the yield hit hit uh, its lower levels, but it rallied yesterday against the dollar. Uh, so dollar definitely uh, looking good, looking strong. Uh, so a strong dollar means what to gold? Well, it usually means wheat gold. And gold, uh, if you look at our little, uh, we've been talking about this, has made a very nice, we've got the 500 moving average here. Um, a support. We've got this downtrend line that we've been watching, and so um, and really some real sideways price action. Now the the dollar, I didn't discuss this, but the dollar we see sideways to up. We really see up. You can really see that the rest of the market, the stock market here, we can see this in gold is just sideways, really just sideways. Now crude oil has been opposite of the dollar and has been down. 
with a rally here in July. You can see um, a lot of volume here accumulating at 84 all the way up to 87. Um, I'll zoom in here for you. Oops. And again, there's the dollar rally, and here you can see crude oil just falling. Um, and you know, some people believe because of the uh, crude oil and that strong dollar, we may see uh, better economic numbers. We'll have to wait and see. But here's that little rally here in July, and it's starting to go a little bit sideways in a range between 90 and 80. Uh, with, as I said, a lot of volume here accumulating in the 84 price level. Crude oil sideways at best. Okay, so here we are looking at the daily chart of the S&P 500, and you can see this downtrend that we have been in since uh, uh, late March, early April. Continually have made lower highs. Uh, in May, we started to make a couple of higher lows. Uh, but overall, and I talked about this last week, you can see right about here, uh, mid-April, uh, we've been in this consolidation. Here's our resistance right around 1370-ish. We've come down to our support right around 1300 Sure, we broke below it just a little bit. But overall, we've been in this sideways price action. And, of course, what coincides with that? Sell them and go away. You know, we really haven't had any major life-shaking uh, economic events, any earnings, although, again, earnings are coming out now. Um, certainly, we've had some uh, issues with uh, the Eurozone, but that's more of a Forex trade than it is here for the stocks. So um, strong dollar, you know, the, the, the market in the inverse relationship has been somewhat weak, if not sideways. So we have to keep in mind as we're looking for trades, as we are as an investor, you know, we have to adjust to the market climate. What is the market climate? Well, we've been consolidating. Hello, options traders. You know, it might be the time to do some credit spreads. Um, uh, it might be some time to find some channeling stocks and take advantage of this up, down, up, down movement. But overall, on our daily chart, we see sideways price action. So we'll go out to our weekly. And we'll zoom in a little bit. And again, we can start to see the sideways price action uh, of the past, really past month. Um, sort of, you know, trying to move higher. So on the short term, we're trying to break higher. But again, we have this downtrend line that we're watching that we have to be caught in. So um, on a weekly, we're in the middle of nowhere, trying to head up. Our daily was in the middle of nowhere, kind of coming out of overbought. And our monthly, the month of July has been, I'm sure it's going to be blah. And it is. <laughs> and we'll zoom in a little bit. And we can see over here. Uh, let's zoom in one more time. I got some feedback, so I want to make sure that we can see what's going on here. So we have to keep in mind our big candle for the month of May down. June brought us back a little bit, and here we are in July. Uh, blase, blase. And our indicators show that, although stochastic is coming out of overbought. So again, we're seeing sideways price action, and even even in our monthly. We can see that sideways price action. We got this big May, June, and now July. So um, we really have to be cognizant of that as we, again, look at what type of trading styles we want to use. Switching on over to the NASDAQ, and we'll zoom on in here for you. And you can, again, start to see that sideways price action. We got the top here at 3000 Coming all the way down here to about 2740s, again sideways price action um, with a little bit of the higher lows as we talked about. But again, since April we've got swing highs, lower highs, and since uh, May we have higher lows. So that is a wedge that we need to break out of, which I would normally talk about. But again, we're in the middle of the summer. We haven't had a catalyst to move us one way or the other, and so I'm not necessarily looking for a break one way or the other as much as a continuation of this sideways price action until we get more volatility, until we get some more liquidity. Again, our daily indicators are pretty much in the middle of nowhere. We'll go out to the weekly. Zoom on in for us. And again, we can see um, certainly since May we've had our nice move up. 
but it's still encompassed in this range that we talked about, sideways price action. Um, indicators in the middle of nowhere. What about our monthly? Don't know why. This is like the past two weeks. I'm not to talk to Think or Swim and find out why. Well, we know Think or Swim it, with each upgrade has been, you know, just a, a memory hog, but starting to get a little slow here. Again, we can see this fall in three starting to half up. We can see the sideways movement here in our price action. Um, so, you know, again, what's going to be our catalyst? What's going to move us out of it? Now, will we get something out of earnings? We'll have to see. Certainly with the, uh, the weak job numbers of June, as we talked about last week, the weak job numbers of the second quarter, if our earnings continue to be bad, Goldman Sachs this week, uh, IBM this week, uh, both have been known to move the market, uh, maybe we can break out of our range. Um, uh, but if, if they're just blase blase, we're going to see a continuation of this size price action, maybe all the way until the next earnings season, but certainly until the summer is over. Okay, so let's go ahead and move right on into our market leaders, starting off with Apple. And we're beginning to see Apple starting to see a range. Now, Apple had really been, uh, you know, going against the trend of that consolidation. You can see it's moving up here. Um, but 620, as it did here in the past, is showing up as resistance. Let's zoom in a little bit more. And so we can see 620, where we got this as a resistance line, uh, hit that this week and pulled back. And so the question is, are we between 620 and 580, or are we going to come all the way down here to 551? Don't know. Um, Apple still sideways up. Look at our point control here at 603. A lot of volume has accumulated here. Really need to get below 595 to start heading down to that 580. And there's even more volume in here. So Apple sideways to up. Uh, Amazon, whoops. Amazon also has been bucking the trend. It was going down for a while here, going down. Then we had our sideways movement. Whoops. Let's zoom out here. And then we had the earnings here, and uh, Amazon jumped right out of the range here, jumped above. Uh, 220, 220 held up a support, then we broke through, now we're coming down, and 220 is being resistant. So Amazon right now, I'm going to say sideways, sideways. Uh, Facebook. <laughs> Look at our market profile. <laughs> really good, and it's on the hourly chart here. Uh, you really can see just this really sideways price action. We also see on a daily staying between 31 and 33. Um, so sideways, maybe sideways it down as we start to uh, close below. If we break below 30, 50, uh, we certainly going to you know enter this this lower range once again. Google. Google, as uh, you know, as I zoom in here, has kind of been you know the opposite of trend. You can see it's been in a, a downtrend and not really making any higher lows. So Google, unfortunately, I'm just going to have to say sideways, maybe even sideways to down. A lot of volume though has accumulated in this area, uh, and so you really got to get below 557 if we are really going to uh, 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 take a break to the downside. So sideways. We said this week we we're going to have earnings from Goldman Sachs. And you can see, you know, here's our uptrend, woohoo! And then suddenly we gave it all back. Uh, we'll zoom in a little bit here and zoom in again, really seeing this downtrend here. There's our downtrend, and uh, we're finding a little support here around 91. Um, but uh, Goldman Sachs sideways, sideways to down. Also, this week with earnings, we have IBM. And IBM, which was doing so well, has taken a little breather. You can see the month of July has not been that great for IBM. Look at this move down here. Um, we'll zoom in a little bit more for you. 
and you can really see this move to the downside. So uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to stay sideways to down, really down. I mean, we're really pushing down here. Uh, let's zoom out for a second. And you can see I have our next area support at 178. Now, what typically follows IBM is Intel. Intel also has earnings this week. And so let's see if Intel has uh, taken a dive. Zoom into our 2012. And we can see we did get a nice little push down here. Uh, so Intel, I'm going to say sideways to down also. I'm going to zoom out for you. Just so you can see, my next level is 24. Now we did have a wick here, so we may be able to hold it, but my next level is just below 24 after that. I'm going to throw in a new one for us. Uh, let's take a look at LinkedIn. Since we're going to probably be dropping off Netflix, uh, we'll see what we have here. Uh, very nice uptrend here. Uh, let's just go ahead and grab in our 2012 price action. Uh, very nice uptrend that we can draw in here. So that certainly looks really good. Um, I think you could also make an argument for a resistance, uh, important key price level right here at 110. And maybe right in here. So that's what we see. So we're in the middle of a range right now. Uh, sideways, I would like to say sideways up. LinkedIn. We'll be interested to see where we go from here. See our point of control at 105. A lot of volume has accumulated. So as we continue to cover it, we'll see where it goes from there. Also, we have MasterCard. And MasterCard is following the market right now. You can start to see that consolidation that's going on here. Going sideways, trying to stay between the 420 and the 440 uh, price level. Uh, MasterCard is sideways. Look at that big move up here, though, at the end of the day there on Friday. Uh, I'll still throw in Netflix for now. Uh, and you can really just see that sideways price action. Although we got a little movement to the upside here, we broke into the new range, but we still have that resistance. We got the 200 moving average. We got resistance at around 93. Um, sideways, I'm no way in no form saying sideways are up, but of course we'll see what happens with the earnings. And finally, Priceline. I used Priceline just the other day to book a hotel to go visit my brother in Ashburn, Virginia. My parents are coming down. Uh, this upcoming week here, going golfing in D.C. Um, and you can see Priceline, really, you can see it is in a range. Look at this range here between 625 and 680, Priceline sideways. As we come to our education spotlight, we're continuing to talk about what's your plan. And so, you know, what are some ingredients to a trading plan? What are some things that you need to be looking at? as you're working on who you are as a trader. Well, obviously, you have to figure out what is your style? What system are you going to follow? What strategy are you going to follow? You're going to be a day trader. You're going to be a long swing trader. You're going to be a, a long-term investor. Um, you know, that's really the difference between a trader and investor, the length of time, one of the things. Um, what time frame are you going to trade? You're going to trade off the daily chart. You're going to trade off the hourly chart, 15-minute chart, 5-minute chart, 1-minute chart, tick charts. Um, the costs involved, commissions, um, if you're going to have a newsletter, be a part of a trading room, uh, uh, indicators, uh, what costs are involved with trading, uh, and of course, how are you going to manage to trade? These are some basic components that every trader should know as they're devising who they are as a trader. As always, we want you to like, comment, and subscribe, and know us, uh, let us know what you like, what you don't like, as we continue to try to add value to your trading. Uh, we have our coaching sessions, our Forex newsletters, and we have a nice little stock tip for you here that can help you with your, your trading with stocks. All of these um, 
provide value, can make you a better trader. But the most important thing is no matter how you get your information and how you make your decisions, you have to be able to discern what's good for you, what's not good for you, and have the trader's mindset and a psychological capital pull the trigger in each and every trade. That's right for you. <laughs> Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.